I'm just an edit Wild Heart Ranch Wildlife Rescue. I want to uh, start this episode of Wild Bites with our owl shirts. We say owl shirts. The back says, want to see my hooters? Wild Heart Ranch Wildlife Rescue. They're a lot of fun. Not a typical shirt for us, but we made them for the crew. They really enjoyed them, so we thought we'd make them available to people. And I have these to sell. I've got small through 4X. And if you want one, just call our clinic, 918-342-9453. They're $25 a piece. That includes shipping. Uh, they are very profitable for us, and the money goes to our animals. So please do that if you want one. And if nobody's here that can take your card, we'll take your phone number and call you back. And then you'll get a little envelope like this with a wild heart smile in it. One thing I want to talk to you, everybody about today is fawns. Now, this information is mostly to other fawn rehabbers out there. There are, in the state of Oklahoma, we are still allowed to rehabilitate wild fawns, and uh, we do a lot of them. We take for several counties in our state. Um, they come in for various reasons. They've lost their mother, or they've been kidnapped, or grabbed by dogs, or, you know, something's happened to them, ticks. And uh, we get these deer in. We raise them in a group, and it takes about 10, 11 months to release them. They leave in the spring. We feed them all winter long. Uh, after they're weaned off of their milk, which is what this is, the stone milk replacer. Very expensive stuff, but it's wonderful, worth every penny. Uh, but anyway, one of the uh, controversies about rehabilitating white-tailed deer is some uh, research that was done on them where they collared these deer, moved them to a release location, went back and tracked them all down, and they were all dead, and they had died of pneumonia. Well. There's a reason for that. The result of those tests were rehabilitated white-tailed deer do not survive in the wild. They stress. Um, it depends on the technique that is used with the animals. What we've always done here um, for necessity reason prior to knowing that it was what was best for the animal was we would let, we'd raise these deer in a four-foot fence, chain link, so they could see beyond the fence. They were never kept from seeing what was on the other side. Be right back. Wild heart, this is Annette. Yes, it is. I, do, I hope so. What, what's your size? Sorry about that. I sold another shirt. So thank you, Mary in Yarnell, Arizona, for supporting our babies. Um, but anyway, what I was talking about was the, um, I'll be right back. Our stack has gotten bigger since we started filming Wild Bites. We've sold four shirts. Grace just about throw the camera at me, but I am not going to stop making money. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, the fawns. When you hand raise fawns and you move them to a release site when they're older, uh, after they have been confined and concealed from the outside world, like livestock, like or sheep and cattle and swine and horses, they can stress when they're moved and they can get what's called shipping flu, which is pneumonia that's induced by stress. And because deer are far more delicate than our livestock, they get it much more easily and it takes a lot less trauma to bring it on. And uh, uh, we have a condition uh, in this that we deal with called capture myopathy and it is stress from being captured or captive or traumatized in animals. So you combine all that, then you take this deer that you've had in a pen for umpteen months, it's getting the adult mentality, it's no longer innocent, sweet and curious, it is now a food animal for large predators. And you take it, you load it on a trailer, load it in a crate, you haul it off and you it let it out in some unknown location, uh, completely unfamiliar to the deer. It doesn't know what to expect, where it is, what's on, you know, that can happen. What we do here is we raise them within this four foot fence. About February, March, when they've eaten all the green stuff inside their yard, uh, March, April, everything outside the fence starts turning green, they leave. They jump that fence. They are now big enough to jump a four foot fence, which means they're old enough to go. That's the best way to gauge it. Uh, and they're healthy enough to jump it, and they're strong enough, and uh, they leave. They will come back and forth for about four to six weeks, but that's about it. By the time we're into fawns for the next year, last year's fawns are done. The only thing we might see is pregnant does 
will hop in the fence at the tail end of their pregnancy like they're thinking about having their babies here but then they realize you know there's a lot of new animals and they decide it's not safe and they go but we don't have our deer die from pneumonia and the reason we know is because they all live on the 40 acres across the street they are one big herd and we see them they don't walk down the street like horses they are hiding in the woods but they recognize my voice and if I come near them or our crew comes near them they don't come approach us but they won't run away unless we approach them so we have confirmed that our method of rehabilitation of white-tailed deer works we do not lose them to pneumonia uh, they're healthy animals and they're doing great and uh, one of the benefits for our gene pool you know a lot of deer get mutations because of inbreeding all the deer in the herds related and generations of inbreeding we're taking deer from all over the state we're making a herd and we're turning them loose so you got fresh genes and uh, you know it, it, it helps their health they're healthier animals so I just want to encourage other rehabbers that have given up because you have saw these studies or you feel like uh, you're not doing any good there's different ways to get it done and our method is tried and true and if you're in a location where you're rural and your property can release you know into the woods and the wilderness away from uh, city society uh, that's the best way to do it if not I would suggest moving your deer to your release location way earlier the younger they are the easier it's going to be for them to make the transition so and that's just the mentality the adult mentality is harder on them than anything as babies they accept more so anyway well my phone's gotten quiet so I guess we're gonna have to get out there Greg did you have anything else for me today well I right this time of year we're starting to get calls about birds on the ground oh yeah birds on the ground uh, baby birds leave the nest prior to being able to fly they do not automatically fly out of the nest they get their feathers in they go to the ground mom encourages them or boots them out of the nest they go to the ground mom feeds on the ground and they do this for a few weeks prior to flying mom and dad sometimes dad's there uh, they're encouraging the baby to fly to them or to follow them that's how they teach them to fly it's off the ground so if you find little birds in your yard this time of year and you think they're abandoned they're orphaned just look mom or dad if they're not right there present will be along soon because they have to fly off to find food they're bug hunting so if you find these little guys just kind of keep an eye out. Mom and Dad's not going to come and fly to the baby. Now, Blue Jays will kick your butt. But most species of birds, they see you near the baby. They're just going to make noise and avoid you, try to distract you away from the baby. And that's Mom or Dad. So um, don't jump the gun. They're much better bird parents than we are. And we got our hands full. And squirrel and cottontail fall season has already started. We're having early baby cottontail and squirrel season. So just to let you know um, it's not unusual to find those babies this time of year and we're going to get the second string so and the fawns are still coming in it's not going to end anytime soon so we've got quite a herd and we always need donations this time of year for fawn formula we're not showing you a bunch of pictures of the cute and the cuddly because everybody's outside the pre-release cages we do have some animals in here uh, greg is going to make you all just tired of looking at fawn pictures but we have a huge herd and we're going through uh, $250 in fawn formula every three to four days. So, yeah, it's mm -hmm. rough on this. So, keep those donations coming in. Buy our shirts. These are all profit. These are paid for. $25 each. That includes shipping. And we have sizes small through 4X. And give us a call 918-342-WILD. 918-342-9453. Have a great rest of your weekend. And see you next week.